Push the button? Cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and actually talk about biking today now. We'll have a, little, a short little class on what we want to do and how we're going to work with our dog. Um, we don't actually have the Springer attachment right now, but I can kind of explain it to you, show you um, what it, where it goes and what we're supposed to do with it and how it works with actual biking, okay? Because we just did the scootering class, and in that one, the dog was pulling you, okay? In this case, you could do that same thing, attach the leash to here, and you could do bike drawing. But for this badge, we're actually the dog is actually meant more to be on your side, running or trotting with you, um, a fast walk. We really don't want to do a lot of running, especially if we're on asphalt. But we want to get some exercise with the dog and actually enjoy a nice little bike ride. Okay? You do see that we have <coughs> the harness still for um, scootering, and that we do have that V front. You can see that it kind of comes to that V. That is a nice type of harness to also have for your bike, except we would want something that's going to hook more towards your back. So this one is meant more for the dog pulling you. In this biking badge, we're not really trying to have the dog pull us on the bike. It's more of the dog just needs to come along the side of us. All right. Do you have any questions on that harness? No. So okay. Yeah. So, so two you do, separate harnesses. Yep. Yeah, there are different harnesses. You do see the many type, almost even some like the the um, easy walk harnesses. It's more of a strap going across. Yeah. You don't really want to use that with your dog on this type. You want more of that V. It's more comfortable the dog, gives them more room in their legs to be able to run faster. Unless you're not going to have to worry about that chafing and stuff sometimes you have with those types of harnesses. And that's why this type is going to be better for this type of exercise. All right? When we start working with our dog, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to make sure, one, they're good with the harness. <laughs> Excuse, come on, Ma, let's play. Let's do something. <laughs> All right, you want to make sure that the dog is comfortable in that new harness, even though Roxy had fine with this one. Maybe if the other one was slightly different, maybe it was leather, maybe it smelled different, she could still be nervous. So you want to make sure the dog is going to be good with the harness. Then we're going to do the same thing. If you can walk her around the bike, I want to make sure she's okay with the bike. Let her sniff it, let her walk around, and then just move the bike a little bit. Make sure she's okay with it. Does it look? <laughs> and just go ahead and move it around a little bit. Okay. So you can see she's not afraid of the bike at all, so that's really good. There's no problems there. So we kind of talked really quick about um, the harness and the bike. Now, if we move a little bit closer, just, I just want to make sure the volume is good. But the other thing you're going to want is there are different types of attachments that you can put on the side of your bike. One of the better ones is a Springer. And what that does is it actually is going to attach to the bike. It comes um, up, back down, and then up again. And what it's doing is, and then there's a spring-loaded attachment. So the leash gets attached to that. And because there's that spring, it can move around a little bit. There are other types that will come straight off the bike. And it's basically just a bar. And there's no real safety in that in terms of the dog was to pull you. There's no stretch. All right. You're going to want a short leash that actually is going to go on there that's going to stay up high enough where the dog can run with you, but it's not going to be dragging on the ground. And you don't want to give them a bunch of slack that they can go way off to the side. So you're going to have to adjust it based on the height of your dog, the size of your dog, and um, the size of your bike. So they all come adjustable. You would prep it based on the instructions of the, the tool that you get and make sure that's on that bike really well. Okay? Right. Any questions there so far? Nope, good so far. So you're saying the spring that goes up and down is probably the better than it It is the better. Okay. It does cost a little bit more, but it's definitely a better quality, and there's more safety involved in it because it's got that spring versus a solid piece of metal. Right. All right. If she pulls you at all, I mean, you're going to feel that tension on the bike as soon as she pulls mm -hmm. because it's just a solid bar, whereas that spring is going to give some flexibility. Yeah. Okay. When you actually start working with your dog, again, you're always going to have to worry about the rule of 120 that we've talked about. Do you remember what that yep, is? that is. If the temperature and humidity combine are over 120, it's not a good idea to exercise your dog yep. uh, hard. And you're, again, you're going to want to start just by walking, your, walking the bike, walking with your dog to make sure that they're comfortable with that. Um, you can always start with um, you being in between the bike and the dog. And then at some point in time, you can go ahead and put the dog next to the bike with you on the other side. You really should not start walking it with the springer attached to it because now that you're not sitting on it, there's no weight 
then they could actually start pulling the bike all over and knock the bike out of your hands and everything else. So this part, you're actually doing it with the dog unattached to the bike, okay? Um, now, I'm assuming that you can ride the bike safely? Uh, yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> Good, because I'm not here to teach you how to ride Thank a bicycle. You very much. No problem. <laughs> but you, want, you do need to make sure you can ride a bike um, comfortably. Um, and you also want to make sure, like I say, that the dog is comfortable in different distracted areas. You may be, in this case, because of the springer, you can ride on sidewalks or alongside um, areas where there may be traffic, other people. So you're going to want to make sure that your dog is also comfortable with all of that, okay? Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you can um, do an instant recall because there is, sometimes with these types of harnesses, there is always the chance they could pull out of that harness. So you're going to want to make sure that you have an instant recall. Again. Many times in this situation, you may be biking really close to a road and you need for safety to have that instant recall, all right? Another safety mechanism that you can do is you can actually have the dog with just a regular flat collar on and actually have a leash that you hold on to. And so if the dog was to get out of the harness, you've got that secondary mechanism to make sure your dog doesn't take off on you. Okay. All right? Again, being so close to a road, you have very little time to uh, do that recall. Yep. Okay, so that's really important. Um, you're going to want to make sure you can do two leave it with while you're riding on your bike. Okay. All right, you should be able to go. And when we actually do the test, you're not going to be going really fast. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, we're going to be putting the food like really close, probably right here on the on the asphalt. Um, you're going to ride by kind of slow, make sure the dog actually has room to get it and reach it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be wanting to say leave it and make sure you can actually go through and. and leave that object alone, okay? Um, one of the other things is, again, with many of our other badges, the dog should not be parking at wildlife, um, kids, children, other stuff that's running around. Um, you should be able to have a dog who's well controlled. Um, we're also going to be, oh, we'll, we'll want you to, if your dog poops, all right, you're going to be out there exercising your dog, and in many cases, the dog is going to end up having to go to the bathroom you want to do trail safety and, and um, cleanup, right? You don't want somebody running through and stepping in a pile of poop and falling. Right, right. <laughs> or riding through it, another biker. So you will, as always, you want to make sure you've got at least your two poop bags at a minimum and make sure you clean up after yourself and your dog. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me how you would find poison ivy? Well, I, this time of the year, we're not going to see much, but normally it's, the, it's three leaves coming off the same vine. Um, it's ivy, so it would grow up, and the edges are not usually ragged, right. uh, but essentially, you know, it's got usually a shininess to it. That's pretty much it. I, I can see yeah. it when I see it. I yeah. know it. <laughs> nope, you actually did really good, because yeah. I just put you on the spot. Yes, you did. <laughs> so so you that's actually... okay. I do know poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did really good. Um, poison ivy can be a bush, it can be something that grows up a tree, and it can be really low on the ground if it is really young. This time of year, it will actually start to model, the colors will start to change a little bit, just like some yellow. of the leaves. Yeah, yellow. All right, but you did a great job as soon as I put you on the spot. It's okay, it's all right. I learned well. <laughs> yep. Um, what you're actually going to do to actually be able to pass the badge is you're going to need a minimum of 12 miles of biking, um, at least one mile at a time. All right. And so it's a matter of, most dogs will get this really quick. It's fairly easy, especially for a dog who's in good shape. You really shouldn't have too many problems. So as you start practicing, you're going to go nice and slow to start with. You can walk a little bit. Then you can start to ride nice and slow. And again, you never really want to run your dog for a long distance. All right, you're better off doing just a kind of a slow trot or, I mean, a halfway decent, again, depending on your dog and energy level. A couple of things you want to think about is you really should not feed your dog uh, before biking or feed them after the fact. You should give them some rest period in between. Make sure they stay well hydrated. You should always have water, your water bowl. All right, you should always have treats with you. Um, if your dog does something really good, especially when you're in that training phase, you should treat your dog. Any questions? I think I got it. Cool. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Bad guys. I sound like I'm five years old on the video. No, you're good. Well, I, I will ask if you want, but that's up to you. Go ahead. Um, what about the paw pads when they're on the asphalt? Okay. For the pads themselves, um, 
a lot of times the dogs will, I know with Pyro, just as a good example, even though we may be on the asphalt, Pyro actually likes to run on the grass. So he's slightly off to the side, but he will run on the grass. You do always want to check your dog's pads, make sure that they're doing good, check them. Um, products like Musher's Cream, um, keeping them um, well toned can actually help. If it's a rainy day, you may think, oh, it's rainy, it's really good. If the dog's pads stay wet for a long period of time, they can actually soften up a little bit like our fingers and stuff do if we've been immersed in water too long. So you actually need to be more careful in wet situations because um, they also may not have quite as much traction, so they may slip a little bit more and they could cut their pads. The other thing that is out there is they have both summer and wintertime boots for dogs. And the summer one is just more of a lightweight and it helps protect their pads. So if you tend to do this a lot and you really enjoy it and you're going to be on asphalt or concrete or on roadsides where there could be glass, it is actually a good idea to actually think about buying pads um, and boots for your dog. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Cool.